I've got a smoking hot wife. On our farm, it's different. It's just different. We farm to live. We don't live to farm. To Todd Family Farm. <clears throat> this is part two of uh, how farming really works and some of the nitty gritty of how the land deals work and some of the behind the scenes stuff that you probably will not hear some of the big or any of the big YouTubers talk about, but it's there. Um, I'm little. I don't mind telling you. I'll tell you how it really is. And uh, it's just the reality. Uh, it's truth. So truth is truth. So if you haven't watched the first one, watch the first one this is part two i don't know what abby's going to call it but this is part two watch the first one try to get through it if you can uh this is part two we always say around here that the dog should wag the tail that the tail should not wag the dog and um, by that what we mean is we farm to live we don't live to farm and there's a big difference of philosophy in life and how we farm and, and how some farms operate. And what has happened is that some farms are on such a, a uh, minor profit margin per acre that they run sheer numbers in order uh, of acres in order to function. So they do a lot of acres making a little bit of money instead of running a little bit of acres making a lot of money. And it requires all their time. And sometimes you see them burn out. And I'd encourage people not to burn themselves out like that. Um, they run 20 hours a day sometimes. Or 14, 16, 18 hours a day. They hire all kinds of help. And farming consumes them. And the farm is their number one priority. And we... Our, on our farm it's different. It's just different. Uh, God is our number one priority. And then family is number two priority. And finally, farming is number three priority. So we always take Sunday off. We give Sunday to the Lord. Uh, we always have family time. I will quit in time to come in and have supper with the family most days when we're harvesting. Sometimes it's hard for me to do that. I want to go hard and I feel a little bit bad that I get to do that or that I choose to do that. But family is important. And God's the most important. So, um, we don't run two months solid just to clear five bucks an acre. We don't, uh, and you know, and, and I know guys, and I don't want to hurt their feelings at all, but when everything doesn't line up, it's an absolutely miserable experience for them. You know, if we have bad weather or bad conditions, we can still get done at a fairly reasonable time and we're not so bad shape that but there's guys that if things don't line up just right for them harvest is absolutely miserable and then there's guys that they're running so much nice equipment and hired help that they're spending out on equipment and help just to get their harvest done and we don't we don't do that either so that's our choice we prioritize god and family over the farm it is a cognizant decision we will never get huge because of that. We will never ever be huge and big and really all that fancy. Lots of times when we look at this new equipment, we look at the new equipment because that's what we're going to be having in 20 years. I mean, we say that. We're going to go look at, I'm going to look at the X9s and the 8RXs because I'm going to have one in 20 years, 25 years, you know. And I want to see what it looked like when it was new. We are not. We don't get a demo of the new stuff, the, the fancy stuff. And that's okay. We put God first. We really do. And then we put family second. And then we farm. Um, many farming operations, they put the farm first. And we just don't do that. We won't do that. We don't live to work. We work to live. I value and spend time with my family. We sacrifice together to make that happen. I value God and sacrifice my family on my farming so that I can serve God better. If he sees fit to bless the farm, then he's going to bless it and praise him. Praise God. But if farming were my priority, we'd be a lot bigger, and, and we would. We'd run a lot later, though, and we'd be a lot more ragged. And I think my children would see me less, my wife would see me less, and they would suffer and sacrifice 
uh, seeing me just so that the farm could be better. Um, and we don't operate that way. My children probably wouldn't be out and about as much. They wouldn't have as much time. And I would have hired hands in the tractors instead of my daughters. I'd have uh, hired hands in the tractors instead of my six-year-old son. And they'd be inside all the time, even when they could be outside, nice weather, or when they're done with school, they'd be inside because we'd be running this thing like a, a just to the max, um, a, a hardcore, more rugged, more rigid. So many farms do run this way, and I don't want them to get offended at me telling you this, but we don't. And, and um, putting farms, you know, and that's kind of, I guess in the end, I, I hate to see it because I don't like that farming's come to that. It's not. Even family farms have a hard time being called family farms anymore. So, um, it's made farming what it is, and it's kind of made it difficult. But there are a few farms, with, and they just have way bigger equipment running a much harsher schedule than it used to be. Um, and I think marriages suffer for it. So... I mean, just, I mean, if you don't know, I, I pass their church. I don't take a paycheck for passing the church. Um, it's a small church, and it ends up, it, it costs us a lot more. I mean, I, I don't take any paycheck, and it actually costs us money to operate it. And that money comes out of our farm to do that. So instead of buying ground, we're trying to serve God through the church. And so I have a spiritual side to me. Uh, I try to serve God. I try to be a godly man. And I think families suffer and marriages suffer. Because people are so work so well business driven, uh, goal oriented, and basically uh, money driven, and um, I hate to see that in the farming world too. Because I, I do think marriages suffer. I think mental health of the farmers themselves suffer, and joy that they have, and and be able to and the, the enjoyment they have suffers, and their children suffer, and the. The consequences of that can't be seen till generation, the next generation. So it could get ugly in, in one or two generations in the farming world. But anyways, I've got a smoking hot wife and seven good kids. So they're my priority, even though she's giving me a look right now <laughs> for saying she's smoking hot. But it's true, and, and they are my priority. It would be God's will for our farm to grow to accommodate those seven essentially new families. I've got seven families that I'm going to be having to be, you know, kind of help help if they choose to stay on the farm. we got to figure out how to make that work. YouTube might be something that, that will help that and that will help accommodate those families as we grow if they so choose to stay on the farm. But it's a rare thing anymore for landowners to sell for honor and integrity instead of just the highest bidder. But there are still some people that will, um, with enough honor, that they're not going to just sell to those big, huge corporations and those big, huge farmers just to make the very, very highest dollar. And uh, uh, I praise God and thank God for them. Um, they they will help keep a family farmer alive and and uh, by selling to me instead of you know, like I say, the big investors. But God does bless, and He's blessed us in that respect. And uh, who knows what the future holds, but um, God's taken care of us so far, so I can't help but serve Him and try to do my best for Him. And He sure, even if He didn't bless, I'm going to serve God and do the best I can with it. So, but I have a farm to support my family. My fa family does not exist to support my farm. I did not wait for my farm to um, be good to start my family. You know, having a, a, a good marriage is priority over a good farm having good children and doing a good job with them is priority over the farm a lot of young men now you see that they really kind of put their family on hold until they get a career um and they they get their wild oats sold and they enjoy their career and i'm just i'm not that way um what did i put here it's pretty sad but i've seen farms go away because the dad was so busy farming he forgot to raise his family i've seen marriages end because the guy didn't raise, um, didn't nurture his marriage, didn't care about his wife. I've seen kids just not care about farming. They're burned out. They don't want to be what they saw their dad be. And those farms deteriorate if you don't have an heir to take over. And they forget to raise up an heir. 
and uh, uh, to take over a son or daughter. They forget to raise up an heir to take over the farm because they're so busy farming. They've got nothing, nobody to pass it on to, and it's sad. Or who they've got to pass it on don't care or isn't worth it, you know, because they weren't involved. And if nothing else, I don't think that'd be me, you know, God willing. But, uh, you know, those guys, those, sometimes the dad can't figure out why his sons don't care or they ain't worth nothing. Well, he spent all his time chasing the dollar and forgot to chase his son's heart. So, um, you better strike a balance on farming and family or, or whatever you do in life, really, because, uh, farming especially, because farming ought to be and can be a family business. But you have to take your time to love your spouse and raise your kids. What good is a thousand acre farm if you get a divorce and or your son doesn't care about farming or your daughters don't want nothing to do with you and they're off uh, uh, they want off the farm as fast as possible and it's like God says in the Bible what if you gain the whole world and lost your own soul and that's a very important principle uh, I pity some guys out here growing their farms but they'll die and go to hell and that truly is sad because they've get, they're going to have an empire here, and then they're going to die and go to hell, and that's a, and, and die because they died in sins, and that's that's a travesty. How good was their huge farm to them then? You know, you could own the whole world and lose your own soul. That's sad, but it's also sad you could own the whole world and lose your wife. How good is that? You could own the whole world and lose your kids, or the worst thing, you could own the whole world and lose your soul. You got to take the time to look. Cultivate the relationship you have to God and to cultivate the relationship you have to your wife and to cultivate the relationship you have to your kids. Um, we could, like I've, I've kind of hinted at this, we might have could have had more ground, but we would have had to leverage our ground against, gra more ground instead of, but instead we've chosen to essentially buy a church with it and start a church and um, trying to raise a family the right way and making less money in, instead of, just making more money. Health issues have taken a lot of money from us at one point. Um, but we wouldn't be what we are without doing it how we did. We could have twice as much ground and half as many kids. How would that be? I don't think I'd trade that. So we could have twice as much ground and no church. Uh, I wouldn't want that. So my life is temporary. This life is temporary, but eternity is forever. I always say working for God doesn't pay much sometimes but the retirement plan is out of this world. And that is so, so true. We are just passing through. And, and I have a motto on life. You have to remember this. We are just passing through. You cannot take it with you, but you can send it ahead. So like the Bible says, there's only one way to the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. And when that happens, it changes you. It changes your perspective. changes your fruit. It changes the way you do. So our life and our farm is a product of that. All we have is God's. We're just nothing but stewards of what God has blessed us with to take care of and to manage for His glory. So we try that. I couldn't imagine it any other way. And whatever it is in your life, you need to have that same perspective. And you can't have that perspective without first being born again through Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not going to shove a bunch of religion down your throat, but everybody ought to seriously consider where they're going to spend eternity and why they think they're going to spend it there. Thanks for watching. I'm glad you made it through the video. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. Y'all come back now, dear.